message of all of the prophets of God throughout history, the greatest of whom are Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, may peace and blessing be upon them all. For those messengers were the best role models for mankind in faith, moral conduct, and leadership. It is an article of faith in Islam to believe in all of them, to love them, and to respect them. Five, all prophets were sent to their people, except for Prophet Muhammad, who is believed by Muslim to be chosen by God to be sent to the entire mankind with the universal message. His message is the culmination of the essence of the all, all of the previous revelations. Now, why do Muslims accept Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the messenger of God? Eight reasons. One, he did claim this, and there is absolutely no reason to belie his claim since he was acknowledged even by his enemies as a model of integrity and truthfulness. His nickname was Al-Amin, the trustworthy. Two, there is no ground to dismiss his claim as religious visions or hallucination unless we dismiss all other revelations and prophets. Three, there is a clear absence of any ulterior motive on his part, not like today's prophets. He lived in a greater poverty and suffering as a result of fulfilling his prophetic mission. The simplicity and austerity of his life continued even after his victory over the pagan who sought to destroy him and to destroy Islam. And until his death, he lived in that simple life. Four, what he taught was consistent, we insist, with the core of the message of all prophets before him to worship the one and only God of all and follow his guidance in our lives. It is inconceivable to say that all Jewish rabbis and prophets, one after the other, did not understand the language and did not pick the idea of triune godhood. Six, five, his life was the embodiment of his teaching and a comprehensive model for mankind under all circumstances, peace and war, all circumstances, and in all roles needed for realis realistic human life on earth. Six. His advent was accompanied by numerous extraordinary signs, one of which is the 100% accuracy of all prophecies that he made and the Quran, which we'll discuss in a different topic later on. Seven, the fruits of following him sincerely, not paying lip, at lip service like most Muslims do today, includes the total positive transformation of the lives of individuals and nations. In fact, there is a sheet out there that gives witnesses of many non-Muslim writers it's available outside. I have a few also with me. People who are not Muslims who make very glaring remark about the character and impact. One Jewish writer by the name of Hart, he said among the hundreds most influential personalities in human history, including prophets, number one was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Finally, according to the Quran, the advent of his coming was prophesied in many scriptures, including the Bible. There is a brochure outside. I have more of that. The Bible speaks quite clearly about a prophet, a great one to come from the descent of Ishmael. The promise of blessing is not only limited to Isaac, it's also the descendants of Ishmael. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 speaks about a prophet like unto Moses, not a son of God like unto Moses. Uh, Deuteronomy 33 speaks about Moses, Jesus and Muhammad because it speaks about Sinai, Seir which is in, Jer in, uh, in Palestine and Paran, which is, according to the Bible, in chapter 21 of Genesis, is Mecca. Even the name Mecca or Bakka, which is an alternative name, appeared in the 84th Psalm of David. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, verses 13 through 17, there is an amazing description of the migration of Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina, and it connected with the tribe of Kedar, which is, according to the Bible, the descendants of Ishmael. John the Baptist, when he came, was interviewed by the Jews, as reported in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. And it was quite clear that the Jews expected three personalities. Asked him, are you the Christ? He said, no. Are you Elijah? He said, no. And then they asked it a third person. They expected, are you that prophet? And again, he said, no, that prophet is none but the prophet like unto Moses with a complete code of law. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank I'll take you. Take a check for the remaining seconds. <laughs> okay, two seconds. All right. Um, and uh, responding from the Christian side will be Dr. Anis Sharosh. And let me just say, as we begin this portion, that for both of our uh, teams on the platform, that uh, in Islam, as a Muslim, you are to be very honorable when you talk about Jesus. So to even disagree with a Christian, you have to be very careful. And I've told these men 
that they can have freedom and that we recognize when you question some of our beliefs that is not going to be taken by us to be a disrespect on your part. But I hope that it'll go the other way as well, that when we talk about our views concerning Muhammad and the Quran and Allah and so on, that the questions that we would have, they are questions and they are to, to hold no disrespect. But we do want to get to the truth question. So hopefully that will uh, put a little oil on the water here as we start out. And uh, Hanis, uh, you may begin. I greet you in the name of Jesus, the man from my hometown, my Lord and Savior. From Deuteronomy 18, I read from verse 21 and 22. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Muhammad never gave a prophecy in terms of matching the prophets of the Old Testament or even the apostles or Jesus our Lord. The most damaging thing about this whole matter is every Muslim every day and any time he testifies the kalima which states Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah meaning I testify there is no god but Allah and Muhammad is his what apostle not prophet in fact we read in surah 3 144 that Muhammad is but a messenger never is he a prophet and a messenger like the apostles were sent with a message but not a prophet who talked to God and God talked to him he never states that it was always the angel Gabriel something else of interest and that is what did he do for 15 years before he began to claim he saw these visions? And what new revelation did he give us that we do not have before already seen and depicted elsewhere? As for Moses, let me share with you what John, what Peter rather, declared on the day when he was preaching in the city of Jerusalem in chapter 4 of Acts verse 22. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren him you shall hear in all things whatsoever he says to you and it shall come to pass that every soul who will not hear the prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among it from among the people yes and all the prophets from samuel and those who follow as many as have spoken have also foretold these days you are the sons of the prophet and of the covenant which god made with our father saying to abraham and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed and this terminology following these statements indicates that the prophet is indeed jesus christ and not muhammad now we come to a very significant matter that's always brought up and that is if one is familiar with the term gospel according to the quran he may wonder why in the world the word is never plural every knowledgeable individual knows that by the time muhammad came the canon of the bible was established and the 66 books comprising it were a fact of life therefore we ask why did muhammad speak of the gospels matthew mark luke and john here is the astonishing discovery ladies and gentlemen we discover that from historical documents that attest to the fact that Waraka bin Nufal, the uncle of Muhammad's first wife, Khadijah, had indeed translated a so-called Gospel of Matthew from Hebrew into Arabic. We know that this particular Gospel did not include the divinity of Jesus, neither the Trinity of God, because it was written by unbelieving Jews. We have pieces and particles copied in the Quran and other contemporary books which explain to you why Muhammad spoke only of the gospel of Jesus rather than the gospel of Jesus, reflecting the same idea because written by unbelieving Jews that Jesus was not son of God, there was no trinity and so forth. Unfortunately, this gospel is extinct, but much like the Iliad or other documents, we have sufficient verses here and there to know such a book was in existence and came to Muhammad's attention while preparing the Quran over a period of 23 years and 15 years before that in preparation before the writing came. Sahih Bukhara, volume 1, page 298, and Sahih Muslim, volume 1, page 7879, testify to 